Hello, this is Jennifer Riggs. I'm going to show you today how I stretch my own canvas. So here's an example of an 8x10 canvas that I stretched. And the pink color comes from me watercoloring the fabric after I stretched it. I filmed a tutorial on that already, which I'll link to below if you're curious about how to watercolor fabric. But as you can see, the back side is a little messy, which is okay because later on when I go to frame the piece, that will be completely covered. So as you're going through and actually stretching your canvas, if it doesn't look great from the back, that's not a big deal. So here I have a, another canvas that I stretched. This one's an 11 by 14 size. So it's a little bit bigger. You can't really see the entire thing, um, but you get the same idea. And the stretched canvas should be really taut. That way your stitches look better and it just looks more professional. So these are canvas stretcher bars that you can find at most craft stores or art supply stores. So they come in a lot of different sizes, usually in two inch increments. So I think I have right here a 10 inch and eight inch, or it might be a 10 inch and six inch, but they go all the way up to like 24, 30 inches. So it's great that you can choose the exact dimensions of your art piece. So as you can see, they kind of just slide together. Sometimes you might need a hammer um, just to kind of get them in. I think I'm gonna have a difficult time with this right here, as you can see, but if you just give it a little elbow grease, um, like I said, sometimes a hammer helps with that. You can kind of configure it together. And then once they're all joined, they should be super stable and then you're ready to go to stretch your piece. Here's an example of canvas stretcher bars that have been stapled in place. You can find them this way at art supply stores. Um, but when I put together my own stretcher bars, I don't worry about stapling them together. And I, they've been really solid for me in the past. So again, here's the back of our eight inch by 10 inch piece. And it's important to remember when you're going to create your embroidery design that the stretcher bars are pretty big. They're about one and a half to two inches. So when I create designs for stretched canvas pieces, I always try to make sure, or I do always make sure that they don't hit those stretcher bars. Now, if you were to create your embroidery first and then stretch your canvas onto your stretcher bars, then you wouldn't have that issue. But I actually prefer working my embroidery after I stretch it so they're already on the bars. So when you're choosing the frame that you want to use with your stretch canvas piece, it should fit really snugly around your stretcher bars. So you can see from the back how there aren't really any gaps and that way um, you have a nice and clean look when you're finished. Of course you don't have to use a frame um, but I prefer to just because if you do frame your piece, then you can cover the back more easily. So here I have my canvas fabric that I have drawn my embroidery design onto, and I'm just checking to make sure that I will like the placement um, with the stretcher bars. So once it's all centered up, it will look right. Again, if you were going to embroider onto the canvas beforehand and then stretch it, uh, you could do that, it's just really a matter of preference. So when you're cutting your canvas, you wanna make sure that you're giving yourself an allowance for the fabric to wrap around your stretcher bar. So I always try to give myself more than I think I'll need, but actually when I was creating this, I cut it a little bit smaller than uh, I was intending. So make sure that you're keeping that allowance so that you're in the clear for when you go to staple. All right, so here Brandon is checking to make sure that the design is centered and once it is, he goes ahead and turns it around and starts stapling. Now you wanna start at the center of both sides and then work your way out from there. So he is using an electric staple gun just so that you can get the hardware store so with one staple in, he goes to staple directly across it on the other side and see how tightly he's pulling the canvas. Like you want it as tight as can be to the point where you think maybe it's too tight and then 
basically keep pulling. So there he's going to staple it again. And of course, as we go to film this, we were having issues where, with our staple gun where it wasn't really going in all the way. Um, so he doubled up on the staples right there. And the final piece, you'll see a lot more staples than you'll probably need for it. So after the two sides are done, now he'll move on to the third. Again, going right in the center. And then onto the last side, pulling super tightly. You can see the fabric actually looks warped, it's so tight, um, but it'll smooth out. Basically, when you're done stretching your canvas, you want it to be like a tambourine. Like you wanna be able to put your fingers on it and feel a little bounce, it's so tight. And I know the title of the video of how I teach you how to do stretch canvas might be a little um, bit of a lie because I usually get Brandon to do it for me, but anyone can do this and I've done it in the past. So after you've done all of the middle of your sides, then you want to work your way um, right next to it and then go from there. So I think as a rule, he usually does about two to three inches. Um, and that's where he'll put the next staple. It's good to have as many as possible just so you're getting it as tight as possible. So he's doing one staple on either side of the original staple in the center and he's going back to check that everything looks centered up. Um, because if you start pulling more on one side than the other, it can make your design start to look uneven. So you want everything to be as tight as possible and you want it to be uh, centered up, your design. So working the way out from the center, you can see that he started with the sides opposite each other and then went on to the top and bottom. So working opposite of each other helps because you're kind of pulling on both sides again to get that um, centered look for your design. So working across both sides over and over again until it is complete. So working your way to the corners of your piece. Um, so you can see that he's not gonna staple in the like corner section. He's getting as close to the corner as possible. And then he'll start gearing up to do the corners where you're gonna be folding the canvas. And I realized that at the beginning of my video, I didn't explain um, exactly the fabric I was using. So this is canvas from Joann's. Uh, it's also sometimes referred to as duck cloth, but it usually comes at Joann's at least, it'll have like four or five colors. Um, I tend to gravitate more towards this cream one, but they have blue, brown, uh, I think purple. So it's not like when you go to an art supply store and you get a canvas that's already been stretched, you know how it has that coating on it? So this fabric canvas that I'm using, it doesn't have any coating. So it doesn't feel hard like a traditional stretch canvas piece that you would be getting from an art supply store or craft store. And you can see Brandon is kind of going over the uh, nails, or not nails, staples that we already put in. Again, because we were having trouble with our staple gun and they weren't going in all the way, he kind of doubled up on the amount just to make sure that it was secure. But you wouldn't have to put this many in. Um, it's really because our staple gun was not acting properly. So this is a quick time lapse of him getting frustrated that the staples weren't going in properly. So he actually ended up pulling a lot of them out and re-putting staples in uh, just to try to get them to go in a little bit more neatly. Uh, so you probably won't have to worry about this if your staple gun isn't being annoying, but I thought I would leave it in just to show you. So now we come to the corners and these can be a little tricky. Um, to get to look neat just because you have all that bulky fabric. So as you can see with the staples we have in, they kind of flare out at the corners and we're going to fold them in and staple um, them down. So as you can see, he's kind of folding it into a triangle shape 
and then folding it into another triangle shape down. Does that make sense? <laughs> so he folds a triangle and then he folds another triangle, trying to get it as um, smooth and as tight as he can to the corner. And I asked him before I filmed this, I was like, can you explain exactly how you do the corners? And he said, first of all, I don't know if I'm doing them right. And second of all, I really don't know what I'm doing. So I'm going to just show him do his thing and then you can get a better idea. Again, because we're going to cover the back and we're using a frame, it really isn't that big of a deal. You just don't want them to be super bulky because then the bulkiness would hurt how uh, the canvas fits inside. So before I show him finish up the last two corners, I thought it would be helpful to insert photos of how the canvas looks once it's completed. So here are a couple photos showing you the folded corners. All right, so here is him finishing up the last two corners, um, just slightly sped up so you can see that all finished. All right, and that is it. You can see that there are no warps. Um, the fabric is really taut and it's smooth and ready to start stitching. Here is a view of the back um, with all of the completed staples. You can see the fabric has started to fray, but again, that's okay because we're gonna be covering it. And there is the front. Uh, you can keep up with me on Instagram at ThreadHoney, or you can visit my website, thethreadhoney.com. I hope this has been helpful. I'm sorry for some of it being out of focus and kind of crazy, but you know, I'm just an embroidery artist finding her way on YouTube. Uh, you can leave video recommendations for me below, or if you have any questions, you can go ahead and leave them there and I will try to answer them. Thank you.